Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will show how we can build a collision resistant hash function by assuming that discrete logarithm problem is hard. So I am going to assume that you already know about the discrete logarithm problem and cyclic group and order of the group on those things that we already talked about. If not, please watch the prerequisite videos first. The main point of the session is to explain to you that we can construct hash functions uh, that are collision resistant uh, using uh, assumption that discrete logarithm is difficult to compute in a cyclic group. Suppose you are given a cyclic group G and the order of the group is Q, uh, assume Q is also a prime number and G is the group generator and you are having a uniform group element H. I will show you how you can generate H in a moment. I can compute hash of any two points. Hash of X1, X2 is equal to G power X1 times H power X2. So what is X1? X1 and X2 are two elements that belong to ZQ, meaning from zero through Q minus one. So suppose you are able to find collusion in our hash function, then you can actually solve the discrete logarithm problem. Okay, so let's, let's uh, quickly do that. Suppose magically you found out um, I'm going to use H for hash function. Okay, let's say um, hash of, um, you found uh, um, a pair that causes the collusion, meaning uh, hash of X1, X2 is equal to hash of Y1, Y2. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means um, you can go and apply uh, uh, on, the, on the formula of how hash is defined. Now you can easily see for yourself that you can just uh, rewrite this as g power x1, h power x2 is equal to g power y1, g power, uh, h power y2, right? And now you can just uh, reorganize this as g power uh, x1 minus y1 is equal to g power or uh, equal to h power rather h power y2 minus y1 now one important low level detail you need to notice is that y2 minus y1 cannot be uh, zero if y2 minus y1 is zero in in your model q um, what can you tell you can tell x1 must be equal to y1 because h is the group element that means h can be represented as g power something but that is contradiction because that means your x1 will be equal to y1, x2 will be equal to y2, which is not the actual definition of a collusion. Collusion assumes that the inputs are different, but outputs are the same. Okay, so y2 minus y1 must be non-zero. That means y2 minus y1 has multiplicative inverse. Um, therefore, we can just raise multiplicative inverse of y2 minus y1 on both sides, right? So you could just say g power x1 minus y1 power y2 minus y1 inverse. Okay, I'm raising the power of y2 minus y1 on both sides. Okay, that means you found an interesting thing. What did you find? You find discrete logarithm of h because discrete logarithm of h is this thing. So discrete logarithm hardness is no longer true, which implies that you cannot find collusions easily. If we assume discrete logarithm problem is hard, which is the assumption we have been making in cryptography for quite some time. So the beauty here is that um, you can construct uh, hash functions, collusion resistant hash functions, although they are slow because you are using exponents and number theory questions are usually slow. That's the reason why uh, in practice, we don't really use this hash function, but it is still nevertheless interesting to see how you could construct a simple hash function easy to explain by making a number theoretic assumption that discrete logarithm problem is hard, okay. Now I will show you a Python implementation of this idea. So first thing is to generate the group, right? I'm going to generate a cyclic group. I'm going to assume safe prime P equal to 2Q plus one. You could apply any other uh, um, cyclic group, uh, you know, say elliptic curves and whatever, but I'm, go I'm going to use P equal to 2Q plus one. So we know that G equal to four generates the um, cyclic group of order Q. So I, I have chosen G equal to four. Okay, and now, in order to generate a key in the context of uh, hash function, what it means is that you need to generate the, 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 the elements P, Q, G, H, that's basically the gen key function, uh, which is generating uh, P, Q, and H that I talked about on the whiteboard. How am I generating H? I first randomly generate a X, and then I take G power X mod P, which will be an element in group uh, G, okay? 
That's all. That's how I generate P U G H. And here is the, the core of the presentation, right? The hash function um, is compressing the input X1, X2 into a small group element. Okay, that's that's all the I wanted to show to you. Okay, so here it is. Um, as you can see, for a demo purpose, I'm randomly selecting two points X1 and X2 from ZQ. And I do G power X1. Uh, it's funny. I wrote this here. I should have just called the hash DL P Q G H X1 X2. So, so in practice, if even if you're going to use this, uh, P Q G H are fixed. X1 and X2 is the input that will change that you will call for multiple inputs to figure out different hash functions. Okay, different hash values. Okay, then I can show you now quickly a hash demo for a small um, bit size. Let me do that. Okay, so Python um, hash discrete log problem for this hash demo. I'm going to use a really small group, which is totally uh, unacceptable, but it's fine for the demo purpose. 256 bit. Okay, you can see here. The input length is 508 bit, the output length is 254 bit, which means we are able to compress the input length significantly. That's one of the important applications of hash function. Okay, that's basically it. 